Welcome back to the hot seat. Today's guest is Morgan Moroni. She's a ex-national gymnast. Witty, smart, humorous. <laughs> Just your own. Lovely. And we're gonna talk about fitness, inspiring people, and having more fun with training. <laughs> I wanna ask you a question. Okay. Uh, how is does... it starting it? Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, the whole thing, a whole thing, yeah. Done. Um, how does it feel to know that both myself and all my friends had topless pictures of your husband on our wall when we were teenagers. Oh my gosh, I did I've, not know where this was going. I've I was actually like... brought a little ah! <laughs> poster with me. This one I was actually feel signed. So bad that he's literally <laughs> busy today because I'm like, I would have made your dreams come true. <laughs> no, that is actually funny. so good. This is, is... So this is from my friend Matt. He is one heck of a specimen <laughs> isn't he <laughs> we were laughing because that's obviously this is like 10 years ago now i love it uh, i love it it's funny because he really hasn't changed much hey i'm looking at his <laughs> face and i'm like looks pretty similar a little bit more scruff around the <laughs> around the beard area same everything else <laughs> <laughs> um i thought it was funny because like i started getting into fitness yes and this was like how i started getting into fitness yes bodybuilding, men's yeah. physique, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then gradually over time, I came to the the light side, the dark side, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> of like... You know what? Steve's coming over to the dark side too. He's I, realized how important mobility is and he's like, oh, okay. I've seen... I've doing seen, it in the airport. And I'm like, righty go, buddy. <laughs> Can't just yeah. jump on this bandwagon. <laughs> I'm surprised you weren't just pulling some handstands as well oh, at the same yeah. time. Oh, yeah, to be fair, I'm done with those days. <laughs> I'm traveling and I'm like, get me home and then I'll do my handstands. <laughs> um, but I guess that you're kind of like, I, I feel like you're somewhat straddling both because you do both at the same time. Yes. I've, yeah. I've, like, I've, just, I've just left one behind. and I've, Yeah. Oh, I feel like I've left one behind. Do you and I've feel, gone. how do you feel about that? Like, do you miss weight training? Not really. Okay. I, I still very much enjoy like doing a pumpy sort of like yes. high put. Like it's fun. But well, you can still kind of get that with body weight workouts, right? You do yeah, a yeah. lot more body weight stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely. You're not just stretching. You're not just doing mobility. Like no, you're no. still doing heaps of strength work. I think honestly, I struggle with doing both. Like I'm in a constant battle. I think it would be easier for me to do what you did and choose one or the other. Is there a reason that you do both rather than do one or the I other? I like how I feel when I work out. So the doing more gym style yes, training. Yes, weights and stuff. But I also like the capabilities I have with my other style of training, like just general capabilities. And obviously being an ex-gymnast, like I want to keep that. Sure. Mobility, strength, body weight stuff, handstands, all of that. I need to keep that for the rest of my life. Like that's something that is just like detrimental to my movement journey. I need that. Weights I don't need, but I enjoy doing it. And you enjoy the way it makes you feel. Yes. I'm not a gym buff though. I'm not like, for example, there'd be times where I don't go in the gym two, three, four weeks. I'm not mad about it. Mm -hmm. I don't care about it. It's not an obsession of mine to go to the gym. As it is, I feel like there's a massive gym culture at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like huge weights, bodybuilding, lifting, craziness. Um, and in the same sense, there's, there's a massive body weight and movement mobility culture as well but i just feel like one i need the other one i do because i just enjoy doing it sure and the enjoyment one is the handstands and the other one's the the one that you no, need the need is the handstands the and need mobility. is the handstands okay yeah. okay because i feel like that's genuinely who i am as as a physical being like that's what because you did gymnastics makes me feel like me yeah you did gymnastics for yeah. years since you're yeah since i was like five Four or five. Okay. Yeah. So I I always say that like when when you see somebody and they're really generally very good at fitness or, or very good quickly, you're like, yeah. Did you do gymnastics yes. as a kid? It was always a base. Hey, <laughs> but it's such a good. I've spoken with Steve about this so many times. Gymnastics is like the perfect base for anyone going into movement of any sport or just in general. I think you just build such incredible like body awareness. Yes. I was strength. just about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> body awareness. Yeah, body awareness. I just feel like body awareness trumps everything. You know, if you can understand and feel your body and you can, like the biggest thing that I got from gymnastics is that I can look at a skill of someone else doing that I have no idea what to do and I can imagine what my body feels like doing that by watching it mm -hmm. because 
I'm so in tune with my body and how it would feel doing a specific movement that if I'm watching someone rotate their torso or do this or they're doing something with the shoulder, I would know what that feels like because I've gone through so many movements in gymnastics and I know how that feels. It's because you spent, I guess, time in the trenches yes. actually training. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like yeah. Although, although it is a bit of a cheat code, I presume, so if you've been doing gymnastics since you were five, you've probably had 10, 15 years of oh, yeah. training yeah it's like you know, muscle memory to that point it's before like, even you start doing yeah before the i started doing fitness. the other stuff yeah exactly what have you tried to incorporate from gymnastics i, I see it like it's mainly handstands but you obviously you still go to some adult acrobatic yeah. sort of stuff yeah i um is this I, just for fun or is you know is there any it's particular? just for fun it's just to keep up skill because again i don't want to be i don't i hate the idea of myself being like i dedicated 15 years to gymnastics to <laughs> win a couple of gold medals and then what like just a I couple of gold medals like but i didn't go to the standard that i wanted to go to sure. so like at 30 what does that give me i mean i'm 26 now but what does that <laughs> give me i want to be able to still do some cool shit like i still want to feel like i'm challenging my body in the ways that i feel comfortable but in a safer sense mm -hmm. when i was young obviously there's like no fear yeah i yeah, didn't yeah. care to fail at something whereas here my whole life like my whole salary, my whole income. And then obviously that determines the quality of my life is based on how I am physically. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just, I'm not as fearless. So I stick with what I know I can do or what I can comfortably build up to with drills and skills and whatnot. There's not the um, risk involved. Yes. Like I wouldn't go on the bar and do giants and into a double discount. <laughs> There's no way in hell you'll see me doing that. I mean, I guess uh, if you are you aware of Nile Wilson here yes. in the UK, and yes. like you saw, he had to go for Definitely. like a neck surgery. Yeah. Um, and and ultimately had to retire quite early. I guess. Yeah. Like twenty twenty two ish. Yeah, and he still had a lot in the bank. Like he is still doing skills today that he was competing in. Oh and yeah. It blows my mind because I'm like, what was the you reason? Just train and upkeep that skill, like. Just casually. He's got no fear. No, he's 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 a he machine. He does some either. whack shit. Like he does <laughs> some. Sometimes I've seen his challenges, and I'm like, that is so dangerous. How are you not? Yeah, some of the like the right flips now? that he's trying to land on these Literally. like or in stilettos and, <laughs> and, and tiny objects. Oh, like. that made me cringe. That video. I was like, this ankle is gonna go. <laughs> it was sketchy. Especially if you've injured yourself doing something similar, which ultimately you would have done over the. I did. Many, I've have never you not? injured myself. Really? Touch wood. Touches my. <laughs> I have never injured myself. Really? What was the ever. reason then that you stopped doing gymnastics? So I was actually failing at school. Not failing. I was just doing poorly. I was doing like C's, getting graded at okay. C. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a smart person, but I'm definitely not a C grade person. Okay. So my parents actually <laughs> messaged me one day after school and they're like, we need to talk. So we went and sat down and they were like, if you don't get your grades up naturally, like if you can't get your grades up, we're pulling you out of gymnastics. Oh, really? Yes. Even though you were competing at kind of a national level. Yes. They the thing is, is that there's nothing for me. Again, it's a really sad concept actually. Because unless you are the top elite in the US, there's nothing for you in gymnastics like in Australia. Like Simone Biles or something. 100%. Australian level of gymnastics is just like two grades below the US. Mm -hmm. So I could be the best in Australia eight years in a row, but I couldn't even qualify for Worlds. That kind really? Of yeah. Blimey. There's a lot of girls that in the US, uh, sorry, in the Australian team, they might qualify for the Com Games because obviously we have the Com Games. But the minute they try it for the Olympics, they aren't even breaching the surface of the qualification scores. Really? Just because of level of difficulty, Obviously, there is no money put into gymnastics no. in, I'm sure, the UK. I feel like the UK actually does really well. I was well. going to say, I think the UK does reasonably well. Yeah, on I think they do a lot better like than Like, it's always Australia, the US and China. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Russia. Yeah, and Russia. But I think, yeah, the, yeah. the UK's got some bronzes here I and there. I totally agree, especially in men's gymnastics. Yeah. Across the board with men's gymnastics, they do really well. But yeah, Australia just doesn't, just, the level isn't there, the coaching staff isn't there, the money isn't there. Like... I went to nationals 10 years, five years for gymnastics, five for acrobatics, and I paid every nationals. <laughs> I, we didn't even get sponsors. Like, it wasn't even a sponsor thing. Yeah. My parents were paying like eight to 10 grand every year to, for me to go to nationals and compete and be the best in Australia at my sport. Yeah. I had to pay for that. That's crazy. It's a weird concept. Hey, it's like, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just not one of the sports that brings in money in Australia. So how are they meant to fund it if there's no money in it? No, I know. Um, and it's such a it's such a great sport for for young kids. It's a shame that it's not definitely them developed. such a fundamental sport for sure. But yeah, so I there was nothing really in it for me. My parents paid to send me to an all girls Catholic school, so <laughs> they <laughs> were mad that their money was going down the drain because I was getting C's in a school of very high opportunity. So they did they were basically like this or this and I tried to get them up naturally but when you're training like thirty five hours a week, yeah, there's just yeah. no time to do homework. There's no time to go above and beyond on, you know, study for exams or assignment work or whatever it is. It's like the best I could do just wasn't enough at that time while I was training as well. I mean thirty five hours a week, that's a full full time oh, job. It is. It's huge. And that's before and after school. That's not even, you know, from the nine to f- nine to three that you have at school. So Take out the nine to three and then add 35 on. So, and obviously I've had some experience with men's gymnastics training, but as like a, a female gymnast, yeah. like what sort of training are you doing? Is it, what what were you doing then? Was it, you know, a lot of skill related stuff? Because mm-hmm. obviously the, the skills are different. Was there some strength training? Yeah. To be honest, now that I think back on it, we didn't really learn new skills very often. Like we just were so repetitive in our training because again, I just don't think the skill level was there. So it wasn't about getting a better, you know, grading or better skills to actually be of a higher level because I was the highest level competing, but it was just about performing it perfectly. So it was just repetitive, so repetitive. Mm -hmm. So when it was coming around to competition season, we would do full run throughs of every routine, which is obviously floor, bar, beam, blah, blah, blah. Going through the whole routine, having like, a couple minutes break in between and doing it like three times through for mm-hmm. cardio. There's a lot of cardio in it in yeah, yeah. that you don't think about. No, you don't appreciate it. To be fair. I yeah. mean, the routines are what, a few minutes long? Yes, exactly. But when you're going full out, like a lot of the time there's one, if you watch a gymnastics routine, their hardest tumbles will be at the start of the routine when they've got a lot of energy, a mm-hmm. lot of like craziness. And then as they go on, they get easier and easier because you're just so wrecked. Like, <laughs> It's just like going hard on a ski erg for however much, but then also taking in cues and skill work. Like you mm. need to be, when you're fatigued, you still need to understand how to do the skill. It needs skill. to look Otherwise, perfectly exactly. as well, even though you're tired and you, it wants exactly. to get a bit sloppy. Yeah, so we would do a lot of conditioning work, a lot of strength work with that. Um, and then, yeah, just re- repetition of the same skills. Over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. I guess that's kind of handstands as well. It is, uh, to 100%. Some extent. But at least with handstands, you can kind of be like, at any point, you're like, you know what? I'm going to train to do a one-arm or I'm going to train to do this. Yeah, you might have to put four or five years into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, sure. But you can choose at any point to change up your style of training. Like if you want to go to more strength-based handstands, you can be like, I'm going to go to that way, build up my body weight strength, Sure. go that way. Or I'm going to try and build on my back flexibility and do some contortion stuff. Like, I guess well, you have a little bit more freedom yeah. <laughs> to decide <clears throat> what you want to yeah. actually work on rather yeah, than like you exactly. have to do something for points yeah um speaking of the one arm like i'm presuming you had a pretty good handstand when you stopped doing yes. gymnastics yes how a two arm i never uh, yeah. i could never do a one arm when i was training well that's what i want to say like for you proportionally how much harder was mm. a one arm handstand than a two arm handstand because i always try to explain this to people i'm like it's not just twice as hard no it's not, it's not like oh gosh, <laughs> two no. arms to one arm no i mean firstly as a gymnast, you'd think like, oh, yeah, it correlates, like it transfers over. It definitely does in some sense, as much as it would any other movement-based skill. But you got that general awareness, yes, body awareness, exactly. as you mentioned earlier. But gymnastics actually doesn't do much handstand work. Like the most I would do, say I was training five years, the most I would do is maybe two walks of the mm-hmm. um of the mat in a handstand, like just handstand walks back and forth. So it's something you just learn naturally because you have to be in that position. Yeah, to do as a, lot a of young the kid, you learn it, like you, mm-hmm. you're kicking up into it. That's one of the skills you go through. And as a lower level gymnast, you might do a handstand hold on the beam or something else. But when you get to high level gymnastics, a handstand on the beam, when girls do a handstand on the beam in an entryway or whatever, it's actually choreography. It's not even counted towards skill work because at that point, it's just to make it look pretty. 
Yeah, yeah. It's not actually. It's just part of the. Yes, it's just like a mm, elegance, getting up on the beam, step down, and then go through your skills. I always remember when I was at uni, I'd started doing some gymnastics and I wanted to learn the muscle up. And then yeah. there was like this Bulgarian gymnastics coach there and he couldn't understand why I wanted to learn the muscle up. He was like, <laughs> that's not even a skill. Like, that's just how we get onto the rings yeah, just to exactly. start the routine. Yeah. Like, it's just nothing. It's so funny. You're like, no, it's a skill. I know it is. <laughs> you wait 10 years. <laughs> yeah, no. So it's just like. It doesn't, it doesn't transfer over as much as you'd think because a lot of the times in gymnastics, you're passing through a handstand shape. You're never actually just stopping and holding. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. Like on the bar, you pass through a handstand shape or it's something that you're setting up for a new skill. It's not actually the skill. Mm -hmm. So we didn't spend much time on handstands. I went like a deep dive into it once I was done. Like we kind of mentioned before, it was a skill that was safe that I could work on that I so could was, actually become better at after I quit gymnastics. Was that the re Like it was a, a safe... It was safe. And I could do it in any environment. Yeah. I mean, you just need floor, right? Literally. Yeah. That's... It's like running. It's like you can do it anywhere. Uh -huh. It's a skill that you could work on wherever you are in the world at whatever, you know. I also think it's something that's pretty accessible. Definitely. Like obviously one arm's a whole different yeah. thing. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah, actually yeah. just learning the hand handle. 100%. I think. If you actually want it and you're dedicated to it, it's super accessible. Sure. I, I think a lot of people... Um, yeah, there's there's definitely like certainly if you're learning as an adult, there's you have the fear because you understand when you're a kid you don't have fear you don't understand bad things until mm -hmm. they happen. Yeah, you just chuck yourself upside down. Yeah. As an adult, you, you know you have to get past that. Yeah, but and you go through like everything that can go wrong as an adult. Yeah, you're able to actually read the situation and think I could fall forwards, I could fall sideways, I could hurt my back, <laughs> I could do yeah. this, get fall on my head. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas a kid, you kind of like, mm, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> i even had a couple of clients who have got like motion sickness from kicking really? from, from from just kicking up and just like wow. that repeated going yeah, yeah, yeah. upside down just and they're constant like movement. i'm gonna throw up and I'm yeah. like, okay this they're probably not breathing <laughs> <laughs> how do you find uh like i said to go one one foot in like us i say circus weirdos but you're kind of like more of a gymnast but we're, we're put I'd you say the same the yeah. circus weirdo camp yeah, yeah. and your mainstream fitness how do you find that like people react to handstands are they like that's cool, whatever, move on. Are they interested? I think it's more a day is they're interested, but it definitely when I started doing handstands coming out of gymnastics, I would be in the weights gyms just doing <laughs> handstands there. Ones. The weirdo in the corner. And it just... was always the weirdo in the corners <laughs> or opposite. It was like, she's just trying to get some attention, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, I'm like, why would you not want to do skill-based training? Full stop. Mm -hmm. I obviously preach before, I love weight training. I think there's yeah. a purpose for it. But there's no better feeling than getting a skill versus just squatting a weight or like building up to a weight that just doesn't do it for me like skill work does for me. Mm -hmm. So when I started doing handstands and I think people kind of saw the journey and they saw how quickly I progressed or things that I could do, then they were interested. I don't think they're initially interested. I think initially they're kind of like, oh, cool, that's cool. Um, that's it. Yeah. Like what you said. But then when people kind of saw the journey and how fun it was and then I could take it places and do things with it, then they're like, wow, this is interesting. I want to do something similar or I want to come work, go to a workshop or get a coach or whatever it is. And then I think it kind of expanded. But at the same time that I was doing it, movement in general expanded and you saw all of these crazy videos on the internet of handstands flips like all of this movement based yeah stuff i feel like Edo came through really hard ufc you know? i think it's pushed that exactly quite a lot. exactly so i think it was timing as well as obviously just being in that space at the right time mm-hmm for it to actually blow up and then that's what gained people's interest sure and they were seeing it everywhere they would scroll through instagram they're like this person can handstand i'm gonna go do a handstand <laughs> yeah i mean and it, it is, the barrier entry is quite low i think i think the fun aspect is important and i think I, the impression i get from your training is that it being fun is an oh, important it's very aspect fun. yeah yeah yeah. and a lot of people do get bored yes with training and to some extent you kind of have to go through periods where like Definitely. as you said with your gymnastics you're just doing the same thing over and over again if you want to get really good at something You've got to do put some boring yeah, training. You have to do repetition. But how do you like to make your training interesting and fun and engaging for you? I think I just change up the space. I always listen to music. I'm always going through, like if I'm doing some handstand work, I'll listen to a song and I'll try and create some kind of combination with the song. 
So, so it's like there's a creative change. element or something yeah, that's artistic yeah, about Yeah, definitely. It. And I'm not a creative person at all. <laughs> I'm just not. But when I do handstands, I feel like I can just flow through whatever feels right at that day. And because I'm at this level where I can do multiple different types of handstands, sure. someday I won't feel a certain kind of work. Like sometimes I don't want to get up and do an hour of one arm work because I just feel dead. My forearms are shot. My body doesn't feel like I could even weight bear on one hand that day. So then I'm doing some funky shapes in two hand and just playing around with it or doing some movement based handstands. Um, and then obviously changing up the place at which I'm doing it, like down by the beach. I love, I, when I'm having a bit of a funk with my handstands, I always go down to the beach and just play around with it. Yeah. Sunrise. That's in Australia, obviously. I don't You guys are morning people in I Australia. Am, yes. And then any Australian that comes out of Australia is suddenly not a morning person. I'm not a morning person anymore. I don't understand ever. that phenomenon. Yeah. It's, this is the thing. So, Australia is the, and Steve will take credit for this because he tells me every time. Steve's like this knowledge bomb. He has the most random facts. Like he's a trivia king. <laughs> you know, you sit down with trivia, he'll know everything. Random shit. Doesn't really matter. But Australia is the earliest country in the world to go to bed. Oh, really? Oh, well. Yeah. On average, it's like 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm not kidding. My household growing up, up until I was literally... 23 would be in bed by 8 p.m. The whole house would be dark by 8 p.m. So because of that, everyone's waking up at like 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. And because a lot of the time where we live on the East Coast, the sun rises on the water, you get a really crisp, clean air. There's no fog or haze. We're right near the bay. We're right near the ocean. Everyone lives on the water. It's not captured into a city. It's not murky. It's not gross. Yeah, yeah. It is like crystal clear, stunning weather, majority of the days, and everyone's outdoors going for a walk, grabbing a coffee. Obviously, there's a massive coffee culture in Australia. And then they get home and they've still got three hours to kill before their work starts, their work day starts. So what do they do? They go to the gym or they do whatever. They get a lot of their day work done before they even go to work. And then so by the time they get home, they finish at five, they come home, have dinner, go to bed by eight. <laughs> so I think what happens is... As, like, London would be a night place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Australia is a morning place. Yeah, it's so interesting. Because Australia is not a night place. Things close at 6 p.m. Like <sighs> shopping centers close. Uh, grocery stores close at 6 p.m. There's only a few. Like, McDonald's is 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing healthy that is open past, like, 7 p.m. in Australia. So, no one's out and about doing things unless it's on the weekend and you're getting pissed. But, you know, it's... I've heard even then, like, the clubs close... Yes, the quite like eleven at 1. p.m. or what yeah. is it one p.m. I've yeah. heard it's I've heard it's really early in comparison. Well, it's eleven. So they in in Queensland where I am, they have to stop selling certain drinks at like eleven twelve, yeah. and then they close their doors at like one or two. I mean, that is like a, a setup for improving people's health. Like, oh, no wonder like you've you, you've got the environment uh, and the culture for yeah. for just being healthy and the weather, definitely. I guess as well. Things so hundred percent. Yeah, the weather I def <laughs> definitely think plays into it for sure because. You don't want to be sitting inside when you know it's such a nice weather out. And also, half the time, like I grew up in a house that never had air con. It was nicer to go down to the water where there's a breeze there than to sure. stay in my house and, yeah. in summer. It's like I would rather go out and do something right now because it's so freaking hot here mm -hmm. than to stay inside and do nothing. It's yeah. just it's hard to stay inside and do nothing when it's beautiful outside and you can see everyone's outdoors, everyone's happy, everyone's living their yeah. best life. just entices you to do the same. Yeah, I mean, as I said, that's one of the things I love about handstands is like, and you said running as well. I'm not yeah. a particularly a fan of running. No, neither am I. But um, I should be. <laughs> but yeah. I know I don't like it for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not fun. Yeah. But getting outside and training, that's like that's probably the main reason why I never ended up going back to the gym stuff. I just I I love just training outside. Yeah. Is do you reckon there's anything that like normal mainstream fitness can take from body weight calisthenics or at gymnastics? I, honestly, and this is a big thing I'm trying to get into people's heads with my app i'm bringing out an app a fitness app but it's so inclusive of daily lifestyle that i'm literally forcing my girls on my program to get outside and do their work outside mm -hmm. like on one day for their active recovery day it's get out and do one of three things go for a walk do this do that yeah blah 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 because the gym culture is just so stale sometimes it's so stale and i feel it 
not in Steve's gym. Steve's gym's completely different. There's a <laughs> lot of natural light. It's a lot of happy sure. people, a lot of people prioritizing their health in a good way, in a yeah, good yeah. sense. But I feel like in the gym, you'll always see the people that go too far mm -hmm. in regards to whether they're dieting or just going stupid, silly on things that aren't benefiting their health in any sense, like an obsessive nature, I guess. Or you've got people that are just starting out and don't feel comfortable being there because of those others. And it's just, it's an in-between. Sure. And the people that are in the middle of those two kind of come and go as they please. But again, a lot of the time, no one's really talking. No one's really smiling at each other. It just kind of feels like a stale culture sometimes. No, I think unless you're in like, sometimes CrossFit gyms do quite a good job of creating that community. The community yes. or, or some of the smaller gyms. But yeah, yes. certainly it can be like this, in the UK especially, like this weird kind of awkward, silent, yes. no one's talking to each other. Everyone's on their 100%. own bit of equipment. And I get that people want to go in, get it done and come out. But I do think that we have other options it's just gym is an easy option for people sure. to go in and do a workout and go because everything's in one spot. But you can yeah. easily create the same kind of setup if you took a pair of dumbbells down to the waterfront or into yeah. a park in the middle of like Hyde Park in the middle of London and done a workout there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would have gotten the feeling of also being outdoors and being in nature and being able to breathe yeah. proper air. I can understand, so from the perspective of like, you go to the gym, it's a different environment, you can focus on your training. Definitely. But you said, obviously, you haven't been to the gym for a few weeks. Yes. I presume that doesn't mean that you're not going to train for a few weeks. No, yeah. So like, what would it, what are you doing? And, you know, maybe you want to share some other things that you're, you're getting some of your, yeah, definitely. you know, people to do outside of the gym. I mean, to, to, to be train. fair, when I'm traveling, and that's when I don't train as often, I've mm -hmm. done like two sessions in the past two weeks. And then everything else that I've done is handstands, just walking around. Obviously, when you travel, you walk so much. It's like when people go over to Italy and they're like, how am I eating all this bread, pasta, <laughs> pizza, and yet I'm not you Gain, know, yeah, yeah, gaining, gaining weight, weight or I'm not feeling super bloated or I'm not doing this. And it's because your whole lifestyle's taken a change. You're now walking 25,000 steps for the day because you're traveling through everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and you're outside. And the quality sunlight. of the food is obviously better. It's, of it's course. a whole different thing. But... Um, yeah, so obviously walking around, traveling, doing all that stuff. And then also I like finding a random place that does like a Pilates class or something that I can come in and actually do a class. I love attending a class in new places. Sure. Because... Is that just because you can just turn your brain off and yeah, follow along? Yeah, and also or? I love meeting new trainers. Like mm -hmm. obviously being a trainer, yeah. you can get different things from different people. As a trainer, you should always still be a student. Mm -hmm. you know yeah, absolutely. you should Completely always agree. still be learning off other people and when i come to new areas i always find that there's new focuses or new things that they do that i'm like wow this is really smart like i'd like to take that back into my training back home mm -hmm. so i think it's just opening my eyes up to how different places do different things and mm -hmm. take one main concept whether it be pilates whether it be body weight training whether it be crossfit yeah yeah and they spin it to make it theirs because everyone's making something theirs, you know. My handstands, I make it mine by, you know, it's not as rigid and I do play around with it and I'm obviously still have goals, but I'm not like the crazy handstanders that are out there these days that are getting the goals done in like six months to a year because they're training five hours a day every day. Yeah, yeah. It's not what I'm doing with my handstands. I make it mine by like making it creative and fun and blah, blah. You make it for you fun by doing blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so... Um, I, think, I think it's just a matter of, yeah, branching out and just trying new things and then in a way that doesn't feel like I'm wasting time not seeing the city. In sure. travel, when I feel like I go to the gym, I'm like, I've just wasted two hours getting here, training, like warming up, training, and then getting home in a new place that I could have spent walking around. And yeah, I wouldn't have gotten the same workout out of it. It's a different, two different types yeah, of things, yeah. but... I might have also seen Hyde Park for the first time. Sure, you sure. Know. There's no reason that if you if you particularly wanted to train with us something that's important, you just bring some rings with you or yes, exactly, or do exactly. do something that's outside. Do something, yeah. And yeah. and usually you'll find a, a, a local community of weirdos as well who is hundred percent also training outside. Definitely. Um, you've spoken a bit about Australia, obviously Australian. Yeah. But you're in America now, Australia or America? Australia. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I didn't have to think about that. I know. And I didn't have to think about <laughs> that one. Um, how, how, what's your experience being of America? Like I've, I've never actually been to Australia myself. I spent quite a bit of time in America. I do like Australia. Where have you been in America? Uh, I've got an uncle who lives uh, in California. Oh yeah. And then 
teaching workshops i've been kind of dotted around west east east coast and west coast but my my main experience of america was west coast and i thought that was the whole of america and i was very <laughs> wrong because america is vastly different depending so on where you're yeah definitely what did you like better west coast or east coast um i went to the east coast in february so definitely okay. the west coast yeah <laughs> mostly because of the Fair weather enough. yeah that would have been cold it was yeah it was it was, bis- uh, it was in new york and oh, yeah. uh, washington and it was just like yeah bis- oh, bisly yeah. bisly cold oh yeah Utah, Southern Utah, where we are, is stunning for hiking, for outdoor stuff. It's amazing. But when we're there for business, that's not what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Australia, it's kind of very regimented the time that you spend thinking about business, even as a self-employed, even as as a business owner. Mm -hmm. When I was in Australia, I really did feel like I rocked up. Even if I was just rocking up to my own office in my own house, Mm -hmm. I still felt like I was clocking on at eight and I was clocking off at like four or 5 PM. And before that I allowed myself time to go to the beach and go sure, for a yeah, morning yeah. walk to meet up with girlfriends for breakfast. And then I got home and worked because I felt like my days were just flowy. They were mm-hmm. breezy. They worked. Whereas in the U S it's very, I don't know. It just feels regimented. As soon as I get up, which isn't 4 AM, 5 AM, <laughs> I get up at like seven thirty. Yeah. The sun doesn't even come up till seven. So I get up at 7.30 and I'm like, shit, I, I want, I'm going to go to work right now. Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. get up, maybe take the dogs for a walk. And that's the most I'll do in the morning for myself before I go into work and sit down for six hours at my desk and do all the admin of life and the craziness of, co- you know, any any self-employed person understands that. Sure, that, yeah. The general admin that comes with it. And then I'll set myself time for an hour, maybe from one till two to go do something. But you're not going to go out and do a hike or you're not going to do all the things that I would have done with four hours in the morning in Australia than what I'm going to do at midday in St. George. No, I'm, I'm sure that's something that a lot of people feel like they haven't got time in the day to Definitely. to set aside for themselves. And I feel that more, more so in the US than I do in Australia. And that's as someone who works for themselves. I choose my own hours and I still feel mm-hmm. that way. So I couldn't imagine what it would be like for someone who works a nine to five, the sun's up at seven, you have kids, you're getting ready, you're dropping your kids at school. Uh, for me, I, would, I wouldn't I would think to go to the gym or do something active in the morning either. No. I would be thinking maybe after, but even then, 5 p.m., you're, you've got- You're tired from the whole day. 100%. You, you're especially tired, your family. You've got two hours before sunset. My biggest thing is that sunset and sunrise makes such a huge difference for me. I want to be up with the sunrise every morning. Ideally, I would live in a country- that I would be comfortable getting up at sunrise every single day and going to bed like two hours after sunset, mm-hmm. max. That's just how, maybe that's just. I think that's where ca- I was well, kind of how humans are somewhat yeah. wired without, yeah, without they, the well, external. They say something along those lines. Yeah, without artificial light, that should. Yeah. You know, you, you you physically can't do stuff at night. Yes. So you're gonna. Exactly. You, know, you wouldn't gonna, you wouldn't sleep in the morning when you've got daylight hours that you can actually do stuff. Hundred uh, percent. So I think fairly recently you mentioned about kind of a lack of motivation and and struggling to find motivation to train and the reason i bring that up is like not because oh you do fitness as a living poor you you can't find motivation to train but it's more like if you can't find motivation to train and it's your job to do so somebody in that scenario that we mentioned who's working in nine to five definitely that has every like uh, you you know yeah turning up is the hardest bit Mm -hmm. um i think the important thing of that is awareness like what is it that causes you yep. to avoid doing the things that you're yeah. supposed to do to look after yourself? Yeah. Um, were you able to figure out like what it was that caused that motivation and maybe some of the things that helped you to find a passion again for, for making time for that in your day? Yeah. I think honestly my lack of motivation came from lack of scheduling. And like I said before, I would come in and not be stressed, but I would, the first thing on my mind when I woke up in the morning was things I had to do business wise for that day. When I allow myself to actually just relax, have a good breakfast, like have a good, decent meal in the morning, the first thing I want to do is go and train or move or do something. Just naturally, my body wants to move, whether it's walking, whether it's whatever, handstands, gym, it could be whatever. Yeah. Go for a hike. Doesn't matter. Naturally, I want to do that, but the only time I'll feel bit jaded with that or unmotivated is when I'm already thinking about what I've got on for that day everything I need to do on my to-do list everything that's crazy about it so then or even work a lot of the time when you know I'm sure you feel this you felt this too everyone has that is in this industry when work becomes 
when work and passion is the one thing and then you mold them together, sometimes you resent it being your work because your passion is taken over by a work brain, a work mind, sure, trying sure. to figure out what video you're going to film today, if this is beneficial for people, you're coaching people, like any of your clients, if they would, you're training and you're thinking, oh shit, this is a really good exercise for my clients here. I'm just going to quickly put on the video. No, that's work hours. Sure. And then you get into a work mindset and then you're like, oh, I'll just quickly send it off. And then all of a sudden your workout's done or all of a sudden you've stopped actually doing what you were there to do is just to prioritize your body and your health first and then do the work after. So I've had to separate a lot of things. Whereas if I'm coming in and I've got filming on for that day, just for generalized content and that's not the same time that I'm training. That is my business hours. That is my timed hours. Sure. And I have to allow myself an hour or two every day to be like, okay, what does my body feel like doing today? I think that's the biggest thing mm -hmm. when I've been unmotivated. I know a lot of people are just like, you know, build habit and just push through. I've never once been a person that's like, I'm just going to build the habit. I definitely have had habits, obviously, sure, yeah, yeah. the same training style for 15 <laughs> years. But... I have so many different training styles right now that if I'm not feeling one specifically, I'll just go on to the next. Yeah, I think flexibility. I think flexibility is super important because yeah. you know, especially if you're watching stuff online, you might feel like, oh, if I'm not doing, you know, six days a week, an hour, two hours at a time, like it's not worth it. What's the point? I'm yeah. not. I'm not doing. It's the, like all or nothing mentality. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you know, if you're able to be a bit flexible, you're like, oh well, I haven't got time to go to the gym today, but maybe I've got time to. Yeah, I've got to walk my dog. Maybe I'll do some pull-ups in the park. Perfect. Or, yeah. And that's that's really like the biggest thing that I want to bring forward to just my mentality in regards to fitness and then also my app and my clients and all of this stuff is that I just don't see a world in which rocking up to do the same workout or the same things every day and then trying to just a lot of people belittle themselves because like, I'm unmotivated. I just don't want to, I wouldn't want to do the same workout six days a week, no. a whole year with one rest day every week. That would be the most fucking boring thing <laughs> I could think of in my life. That sounds so horrible. Yeah. It's, it's like, somewhat torturous. It give your, yeah. Give your brain a little bit of, you know, juice. Oh, I, think, like, I think that's where like handstands come into it or, or something that's skill based. Definitely. Yeah. Um, for people who are just doing normal gym yes. training. Yes. That's a repetition. You're doing the same thing with handstands every time, but it's, there's so many things you can change about it. And it, there's also the feeling of each time you get a little bit longer of a hold or each time you're doing something and you surprise yourself, you get like this spike of like adrenaline and serotonin. You're yeah. like, holy shit, I can do this. And it's exciting. Whereas I feel like lifting weights, people get into this mentality of like, oh yeah, grunt, just get through the set. Like, what? <laughs> In my head, I'm like, that sounds so boring. It's like a suffering sort of mental. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how, is, have you, is there any ways that, I don't know, you've come across or, you know, to like bring in that play game element to weight training? Some people might not want to do Definitely, handstands. Yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. But like, how, yeah, making your training fun in that, in that I sense. I think just changing up the exercises, making them a little bit different. Like sure. there's, people are breaking their workouts into lower body, upper body, whatever. I would set a challenge. I would put skills into the challenge. I use a lot of handstand stuff in my weight training. Mm -hmm. So with my combination of a shoulder press, I'm also doing a max handstand hold. Okay. And I feel like combining those two is like elite because <laughs> my shoulder, like push, push strength is handstand. Oh, yeah, full so, stop. Yeah. So I'm, I know I'm working my skill set. I'm fatiguing myself in my skill set at the same time that I'm actually building up my weight work, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it in a way that I'm like, okay, I'm swapping it up. I'm not just sitting at one bench and doing the same exercises every time I'm coming through and combining it with a much smaller, much more mundane exercise. That makes me feel like I can do both. I'm doing both. I'm doing skill and, and training. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned you do fitness as a job. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I do fitness as a job. <laughs> Not quite sure how I ended up here, but here we are. So um, if you if you couldn't do that, what would you think that you'd be doing as a career? I think I'd be in sports. I was at uni doing physio, a physio degree before I quit. I pulled out of uni. Oh, okay, you're doing physio. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, because I got offered stuff like traveling and, and contracts and stuff and I couldn't do it while I was at uni. I probably could have gone part time. Sure. But it kind of just all came at once and it was, to be fair, a lot of money 
in a contract and I was just thinking, I looked up the average wage of a general physio and sure. my contract, my first contract trumped that. So I was like, why am I still at uni for another two years getting a degree that I'm already in an industry that I could excel at? Why don't I just put all my time into this, get better at this and make a living out of that? So um, I did that and I think if I wasn't, to have gone down the route of like social media and coaching and then obviously stepped into more of a gymnastics coach role, which is the job that I had, you know, basically from 14 to sure, 23, yeah, yeah. Um, then I would have gone along the route of a physio or like a sports coach or a dietitian or something along those lines um, within sports because I'm a massive sports fan. Like I love AFL. My dad was a professional AFL player. Uh, Australian, Australian rugby. football rules. Football rules. Yeah, so it's like, not rugby. It's, it's not rugby. No, it's its own thing. Okay, got yeah. you. It's like, you know how America has American football? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. You don't really play it. I think London has maybe one or two leagues here. Yeah. Only because of all the Australian expats <laughs> that are now living in London. <laughs> but yeah, so I've just, I've always grown up around sports. So I would have done something around that because it's a passion. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Was there anyone that inspired you to to move that way or start sharing things online? Not really. Not not one person specifically. To be fair, when I started doing social media and like getting stuff like that, I had had social media for like a year and I had no idea how to use it. I was just posting videos of my handstands and flips and training in mm. general. And I think the point of difference being that I could do skill work or that I had gymnastics level stuff is what brought sponsors in or what brought companies like Gymshark that I work with to kind of have some eyes on me. But prior to that, my whole life, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what YouTube was. I never used YouTube until shit, like three years, four years <laughs> ago when I started my own YouTube, you know, I never watched YouTube. I love sure. watching YouTube now. I love watching vlogs and stuff. But I wasn't a YouTube kid. No. We didn't have internet in my house until I was 18. What? We didn't have a computer. <laughs> my parents both had a laptop for work and they had one of those plug-in internet things. Yeah, yeah. Dial which obviously meant that we never had access to it because it wasn't a Wi-Fi. It was like a stick modem thing. Probably for the best, to be honest with you. Definitely. <laughs> um, my first phone, I got it like 16. But when I got into this space, I didn't know anyone. I didn't follow anyone. The only people that I looked up to were Cirque du Soleil artists. And the only reason I knew of them is because my gymnastics center that I grew up at sure. also did acrobatic gymnastics, which I also competed in. And a lot of the people that were older to me, that a lot of the generation of acrobats that came through before me that I looked up to as a kid were all in Cirque du Soleil now. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that's like the standard, end result, isn't it? Exactly. My standard was Cirque du Soleil. Everything I watched was Cirque du Soleil. So... That's like, I, you know, yeah, I grew up seeing the girls train with their partners in the gym and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So when I started kind of doing that and getting more into handstands, I was like, I want to do that. I want to train to get to that point, which never happened because I kind of figured I actually worked out the Cirque du Soleil, again, income for like what they put their bodies through is just not, doesn't make sense to me. But um, yeah, they, there was just a lot of opportunity along the way. And that was the inspo that I had was always Cirque du Soleil artists, but doing it in a way that I could share what I was doing and how I was training yeah, on social I, media. I think there's a there's a difference between something that's a performance and something that's helpful. Definitely. Because like everyone can watch Cirque du Soleil or, or even just like elite level gymnastics. They can appreciate it. They can appreciate it. I think even with like elite level gymnastics, I think they should get you know, in the Olympics, they should mm -hmm. just pick one person from the audience and be like, just give a go at like everything that the gymnasts are yes, about to do. Just so they can just see. Just for like a I context of how hard. Yeah, when you've got 20 different people versing each other with the same skill set, it looks. you forget that the norm is, woo. Yeah, and it's the same with like online social media. It's like, yeah. you, you know, you see people who are just doing absolutely bonkers stuff. 100%. And like, people don't even appreciate it anymore because it's just, there's it's, so many people that are posting similar stuff that it's like, it's wild. It's crazy. It's just it's just so impressive. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, the the important as you, as I mean, sounds like you just you know just start just start sharing stuff, yeah. just start doing something. Hundred percent. And that's the thing. I didn't I didn't have any plans to do anything with it. I just started sharing because 
it was a new and fun thing. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where it started. And then opportunities just kept coming and I kind of stopped what I was doing and just dove in head first. Cause I was like, fuck, when am I going to get another opportunity like this? And it paid off for me. Luckily, otherwise mm-hmm. I would have just tail between my legs, gone back to uni <laughs> and, and finished off my degree, which I still could do any day, but I'm just, I can't see, I can't see myself doing full-time uni for two years and having to stop everything else. Yeah. I mean, there's an element that like this, the centralized way of teaching, you're never going to learn the sort of stuff that is like bodyweight hands. That's not, it's not taught really in university, Yes, which is nothing wrong with that. No, I exactly. Think, and I think that's the benefit of social media is you get to meet people and share and learn Definitely. things like that's probably my favorite they part. say that some some people are saying that they think ai is going to basically stop universities from being in function <laughs> they seriously do i've seen it so many times because university is obviously so structured in their teachings it's all textbooks it's all this i think there's um, a delay to it as well like that you know uh, very much what's being shared online um there's no filter there's there's no obviously checking so you gotta make sure you're not getting correct information but like you know you're seeing what's happening you know at current time Mm -hmm. whereas in universities it's got to go through peer review process you know it's got to be built into a course like they're gonna be lagging five ten years behind and i think as well like there's a time and space for that there is there is definitely i I wouldn't want a doctor that's been educated on the internet but you know a lot of stuff is like definitely there's so much information out there for free you can 100%. learn so much Definitely. Um, if you're interested and you've just got a bit of a passion for it. Yeah, um, totally get Well, that. I think we've talked enough. Oh, we could talk forever, I think. <laughs> I, think <I'm> talker. <laughs> I think it's time to um, make use of the space that we have here at the community bar. So we got keen. surrounded by various different saunas. Love it. Uh, I think we're going to hop into Treehouse. Treehouse looks like my pick <laughs> to be fair. Uh, and do some hot takes and then... Yeah. The final finale of an ice bath. Fuck. <laughs> yep. Ooh. How cold are we thinking? Uh, How so cold is it? We've got hundred. I think it's sixty kilos of. I don't know. A lot of ice. So as cold as we can make it. Oh my gosh! It is you summer can here go in the as UK. Cold as you can. <laughs> it is cold already here. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh yeah, no. Nah. You can sit down. No. Nah. <laughs> I think it says, what, 85 degrees? I just, I just don't think I'm right an extremes now. person. <laughs> How long do you stay in, the, in this for? As long as it feels good, to be fair. So okay, so minutes. you, okay, gotcha. All yeah. Right. I mean, some people... So definitely... you're not like an exact time person? No, no, no. Because some people do like 15, 5, 15, 5, yeah. 15, 5. No, you just I, kind of feel it out. Yeah, so I think generally speaking, like if you want to get a good effect from the sauna in terms of like some people are crazy to running because essentially your heart's having to pump blood around. Yeah. Without yeah, the yeah, yeah. And and the other benefits like fifteen maybe twenty minutes is like you have it's the same as training like if mm-hmm. you turn up and you just dot about a bit you're not gonna make progress yes. you're not gonna get the benefits totally get from that. it so it's the same with sauna like obviously you mentioned that you do a bit of everything yeah. And that's what you love. But if you had to drop everything and do only one thing, what would that thing be? Shit. I'd just say body weight. Can I say just, body weight? You can't say body weight. Body so weight just thing. like calisthenics and not yeah. feel like, I guess. Yes, more, yeah. Everything less. Because I feel like if I, yeah, I just, I'm being a bit literal with this, but if I just did handstands, I would never get a lower body workout. Sure. I need to have like, yeah, body weight, it's like plyometric stuff, upper body stuff, like calisthenic stuff, just it's, anything with your body. It's probably, you know, what you've grown up yes. essentially doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What about you? What about me? I can choose, I probably would just do handstands. Like, really? I, I quite like handstands. Then you never do anything on your legs. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't care. That's why we have joggers. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. No. I, that's a very British thing, actually. Jo- oh, joggers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we go joggers. That is funny. What's one mistake that people make with nutrition? Oh, thinking it's an all-in. All or nothing. Yeah. People don't 
this is I feel like people have the problem and I see it firsthand all the time not even just like within friends and things like that they go so hard on nutrition they learn so much about what's good for them it's great they've got all of this beneficial things that they're taking and eating and their gut health is amazing and it's like you are the epitome of like good eating Mm -hmm. but then their relationship with it is so bad and I think you need to give and take for a little bit of both I don't think you need to live 100 percent. i mean they always say it's like 80 20 whatever yeah but it's like i don't think you need to go and there's so much information these days where it's like don't be eating this eat this instead it's like just fucking eat what you want to eat within reason obviously we're not going ham but eat what you want to eat and eat until you're full like i see so many bad relationships with food and then i see people that have good relationships with food that don't even understand how to eat healthy or like they don't even know what they need to be doing and then so it's just somewhere in the middle i think you said it can be quite obsessive i think you know it can be also a bit like an anxious thing yes you know you get like people attach a feeling to food as well it's almost like a fear-based you get scared of yeah you know definitely you know i've been there because i I remember years ago now i like i stopped eating uh, wheat and grains and like why um, I was just getting interested in this sort of stuff. Okay, and I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I try, yeah, yeah. I, I try out anything. Yeah. And I can remember like being at uh, like a family event and like not being scared to eat bread, but like yeah. in my head because I'd been reading things and you know indoctrinating <laughs> myself into yeah. a way of thinking. I was like, oh, this is going to do something really bad to me. Whereas in reality, I've been eating bread all my life. Yeah. And, you know, it's yeah. not, not going to be the end of the world. What's the worst DM you've ever received? Oh. <laughs> naked photos for sure oh no or, and just some like nasty messages with it the problem is when i started doing all my gymnastic stuff sure me being australian i'm always in bikinis i'm always just outdoorsy and things are kind of like in europe where you go to the beach and things just aren't sexualized you know when you're people have their tops off so people yeah. walk around naked but nothing sexualized no. it's the same in australia girls are wearing like bikinis nothing sexualized people are doing acro with each other you know Mm -hmm. bums in faces nothing sexualized because everyone is so used to it everyone grew up with it we're not in the uk where everyone's in tracksuits you know (laughs) like we're used to seeing skin on people oh no oh no it's died that's fine um yeah used to seeing like skin on people and so when i started like posting in summer when i was doing handstands in my backyard yeah some of the big pages like lad bible and shit would repost it and it just got the worst kind of followers from it. Like, my following grew, but I was just like, I would rather have no followers. Because it was just men that, like, followed these pages for shits and giggles. Yeah. That then went over to my page and just... I just... You think that in person, as you said, like... No, you would never. And that's the thing, like, I've never had that in person. No yeah. one's ever said that to me in person. I don't think anyone would ever have the balls to say that to me in person. <laughs> I'd fucking rip them to pieces. I was going to say, I feel like... I'm yeah, I would annihilate them. them. Yeah, so... <laughs> It's funny because it, obviously social media is social media. Everyone has their shit that they get, whether it's friggin' sexual things or people just putting shit on people. But it was just a weird thing coming into social media and being like, oh, shit, okay, like, this isn't normal. I have to kind of... And I didn't have to change what I was doing, but I felt like I should just because I don't want those people on my page. Um, last question. Hit me. On the opposite of that, what's the most common thing that you get asked that you, you, know, you could give just like a one blanket reply to? Actually, the worst I would say handstands. I would say handstands. Like, hand how, how do I get started on my handstands? Or so how, does how do I get more mobile? Okay. I've done a lot more mobility content recently sure. because people are just all up in my grill asking me how to do that. And it's like, obviously, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. There's a lot of exercises out there that work for people. But I think there's also a lot. And actually, I've really loved some of your videos. So I really loved your video that you explained the difference between flexibility and mobility. Sure. Because so many people in the industry, people go so hard on what is right and wrong. But I feel like, specifically in this, anytime I post something, I could literally say one thing. Just the tiniest thing. People are just up your ass like no tomorrow. I was I was looking through your um, post just like just have a look at the comments. Yeah. And, and you made one about mobility and flexibility, and someone was trying to correct you in the comments. So I was like, do you know what? It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Like just do both. Yeah. It, like in my head, I'm like, just do either. And then even like, I get, I get. There's a time and place for active, passive, like all of the work, dynamic, you know, static mobility, stretching, blah blah blah. 
But if you're doing anything, it's better than nothing. Like at my point, at this point in my like job, I'm like, just fucking do something. <laughs> because you're making it so much worse on your body if you're doing nothing. Do you know what? I feel like that's so... It's, kind of it's like, like the eggshell, like you're just everyone's walking on eggshells. Yeah, it's kind of like the circle of training. So when you first start, you're like, oh, I'll just do something. Yes. Because that's good. And then Definitely. you get a bit more into it, you learn a bit more, and you're like, oh, no, I need to do the perfect. Yes. Thing. And then once you spend four or five years training, yes. you're like, no, just do something. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's this full it's circle. It's so funny. It's so funny, yeah. Because you come back to the basics and you're like, something's better than nothing. And especially when you're trying to encourage others to do something they've never done before in their life. They barely even make time for themselves to be active, full mm -hmm. stop, let alone added mobility. And everyone hates doing mobility because yeah. they're uncomfortable with it. It hurts them, blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, I'll literally be like, just fucking sit while you're watching the TV and do this, you know, yeah, static yeah. stretch. And it's going to be better for you. Like, obviously, if you're not going into a freaking plyometric workout straight after, no one's doing that after watching TV for five minutes. No, no, no. But that thing every day or every second day is going to be much better than if you were to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to do it like you're a mobility specialising coach. No, no. You can just do something. Yeah, and I, I kind of equate it to, like, people who maybe don't like olives or don't like coffee and they're trying to enjoy it. So I just do something very, very yes. small once a day yes. and then just see how it goes after. Definitely. You might find they're like, that's how I learned stretching. I was like, I can touch yeah. my toes. So I stretch my hamstrings for, like, a couple of minutes yep. each night. And then gradually I was like... Oh, maybe I should try this one. Yes. Maybe I should add another yes. one. Yes, and, and now it's like, 100%. Uh, <laughs> Anything works. Okay, how you doing? Good. Feel ready? good. You ready for uh, the last fun part? For a 10 second ice bath? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. After you. Fuck, yep. Ah! Oh, yes, you know what? What? That's pretty cold. <laughs> what, you want to get out now? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as I get my bum in, it's all it's over. over. <laughs> it's better just to <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> These noises are not mine. <laughs> How long have you been doing ice baths? Fucking hell, not long. <laughs> I'm getting under. I know I've got to get my chest under. Leave me alone. <sighs> okay, whilst you're there. <laughs> You know what? Yours is probably not as cold because you got more water. Just what? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I don't want to move. <laughs> what? Shit, my toes. <laughs> what fitness? I just got to stop here. What my toes are. Do you, hate? you can put your feet up. Okay. <sighs> I've just, just got my bum in at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> what Instagram trend do I hate the most? What fitness trend do you hate the most? Ow. Um. Think about the sun. It's sunny. It's warm. This list them off. <laughs> you can have as many hates. I okay. Hates a strong word for starters. Secondly, I'm just gonna lower in as I get used <laughs> to it. Secondly, okay. Let's not say hate. I just don't think hot girl walk. Don't like hot girl walk. <laughs> I like walking. Hot girl work just seems walk seems weird to me. Like. What makes you hot that you're walking? It, we don't need to talk about being hot. That's such a... Especially when it's so cold. It's just this, Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like um, thirst traps. Like, I don't like thirsty gym boys. Oh, so cold. <laughs> <laughs> thirsty, like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, the in-between videos that the boys, like, the teenage boys are uploading these days where it's, like, motivational quotes, but you're like, what have you done to be motivational? <laughs> <laughs> You've been young. Yes, exactly. They're like 17 and they're being like, you, need you just got to go in and get it done. You need proof of work. Yes. Stupid exercises that have no, like, I'm talking like a star jump, full twist, burpee. <laughs> you know? I saw like, something. do a burpee. Just, yeah, do the, we said about this, just doing, just do something. Yes, do people this taking stuff. functional and thinking it means just create some stupid random exercise. Mm -hmm. You can just do the basics and you can do them well and you'll be functional. That's my three that I can think of. Okay, okay. I'm getting better at this. You're by doing the way. well, to be fair. What's... I am just really scared of putting my toes in. <laughs> What's the one thing that you least look forward to with with training that isn't ice baths? Shit. Um, <laughs> I. You know what? It's the same thing I love though. When I'm done, I just don't like conditioning, like a circuit Metcon style finisher. 
I love how I feel after my finishes, but I struggle getting... It's kind of like an ice bath. You know bath. it's going to suck. Yeah. Like, I know this ice bath... Ice... I can't even fucking talk. Ice bath <laughs> sucks. But I'm going to feel good after. Right. I think we should finish up. You want to do a head dunk? Fucking hell. <laughs> what is wrong with you? No? Okay. You going to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. I ain't no pussy. All right. <laughs> I am, but I'll... Wait. Are you going first or am I going? We're going the same time. Let's do the same time. Does it get in your ears? No, it's still. I've never done it. I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> what if I swallow water? Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, that actually felt much better than I thought. Shit, <laughs> Oh, I feel good. Hey, at least it's sunny. It is sunny. And I can warm up now. <laughs> Get my crocs on. <laughs> safety, safety. Safety in the crocs. Oh, thank you so much. No, thank you. It was, it was a pleasure. Thank lovely you. doing a podcast and answering some questions and hanging out. And well done. Thanks for forcing bath. me in the ice bath. <laughs> you had my hands behind my back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll get a hundred percent. I can't be the Australian that doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for having me. No, it's special. Thank you for time to join and, and answer the questions. And um, yeah, best of luck. Thank you. For all your travels. Look forward to seeing what you end up doing. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be doing.